Hi, my name's Irrelevant, and on a previous episode, I put together what I called the ultimate Windows 98 build. And it worked rather swimmingly, but I couldn't leave well enough alone. I had to tweak on it, I had to modify it, I had to make it better. I wanted to make it so that it would support all my legacy computing needs. And indeed, I did just that by making it a multi-boot system. Lilo multi-boot. Yes, this one SSD, 32 gigs, has Windows 2000, Windows NT4, DOS 6.2.2 on it, which I was able to pull off because I remembered that NT4, and I do believe 2000, have a multi-OS bootloader built onto them. It's just a case of rubbing it the right way to get it to do what I wanted it to do. So today, I'm gonna be duplicating this process on this much larger 60 gig SSD, and I'm gonna try to throw in a fourth operating system. I'm gonna try to get Windows 98 on this too, so that huh, one disk will rule them all. Now, since the last episode, I did make some changes to this system. For one, I've added more hardware in the front. I am interested in doing a video about the uh, Panasonic PD drive and this uh, Connor Quick 80 tape drive. And this hardware will support them, but operating systems, well, the PD drive prefers Windows 2000. The tape drive needs 98 or NT4. A tape burned in NT won't read in 98 and possibly vice versa. So I needed some uh, older and more various support. On top of that, I made improvements to the uh, the cooling and, and, and the fan situation because that, that was the biggest deficit. The biggest one being that the power supply fan was just too loud. I actually pulled the original fan out and replaced it one with a more uh, palatable acoustic signature and it was tricky because I had to take the fan, oh, completely apart to get the proper wire lead soldered into there. Now, indeed, this fan blows with a more gentle breeze, mirroring that of the radiator fan, and this is a much smoother and sensual sounding system now. Also approved, the front 120 had magnetic fan mounts right to the front, and I put on these L brackets so that I could mount it to the side instead. And indeed now, it blows a gentle breeze across my interface cards and they all stay cool to the touch including the video card, which has a passive heatsink on it. The other problem I was having is, when you water or cool a system, you kill the airflow in this general area. And motherboards uh, generally are designed with the idea of a heatsink fan in place is going to circulate area in that area. Area in that area, area, area. Meanwhile, some higher end systems, cases and motherboards might uh, take into account for water cooling, but this one didn't. So I found that that chipset was getting a bit hot to the touch. I found this cute little fan in inventory that barely makes any noise at all. You can't hear it over the rest of the system. And I just screwed it onto that heatsink, and now that's cool to the touch too. So now this system's completely thermally tuned and a lot more enjoyable to use. But hey, now that you're updated on that, let's get to the feature at hand. Now, unfortunately, my screen capture doesn't play well with raw DOS and those versions of, uh, is it EGA, VASIC VGA? So we're gonna kick it old school and film the screen once again. Thought I was done with that. So we're gonna go ahead and get started, shall we? Now, it just so happens, many years ago, I put together a bootable CD DOS 622 installation. Uh, don't ask me how I made it, I don't remember, but either way, it, it works. So it's gonna make this process a little bit easier because I may have forgot to mention, step one is to install DOS. Oh yeah, booting MS-DOS on a CD, what a novel idea. Oddly enough, it's not particularly fast. Oh, there it is. So bear in mind, the drive letter it makes for this CD is R. But first, we gotta start with some F-disk action. Classic, create DOS partition. Create primary partition, yes. All the space, restart. DOS hails from the day when definitely every configuration change you made, you had to restart. Now we are going to ask format what its switches are because we wanna do a quick format because it's an SSD. Format C slash Q. Uh, yeah, how fast is this gonna be? 
Cannot be quick formatted. Proceed with unconditional format. Okay. Oh well, it's going fast anyway. Enter characters. How about MS DOS? All right. So now we go to the R drive and we go set up and I have to use the slash G because this version of DOS wants to make emergency disks and that circumvents that giver. <laughs> Press enter. These are pretty much good. Oh, giver. Ready to upgrade your system. Okay. That's a bit different. Oh, wow, look at it go. <laughs> you blink and you miss it. Let's uh, remove this disc. Guess we're done with this already. Oh, my friend, it was a short time, but it was a sweet time. Now, where's the case? Now, one of the great things about this uh, SATA TX2 Plus controller I'm using is it has the boot ROM on it, and DOS doesn't seem to care. It just works. Uh, and step two, step two, is to get Windows 98 installed. Now, uh, during part of my experimentations, I tried to do a thing where I just copied my existing 98 over, and, well, it, it, I couldn't get it to work properly, because Windows needs to know, or Windows 2000 needs to know where the boot sectors are and all that stuff, so Windows 98 has to establish itself a boot sector for Windows 2000 to work with. And just willy-nilly copying over didn't seem to accommodate that need. Now we're hoping that Windows can recognize that hard drive controller. It's tricky, because it boots up like DOS, but once it gets going, I'm not sure what to expect. Now one of the first things we want to do real quick is we want to shift F5 and go into the command prompt. So we need to manually assign our, our hard drives here. Once again, with the ARF disk. Yes, we're going to enable large support this time. Now once we're in there, we're going to uh, make another partition. Extended partition. Verifying integrity. We're going to make a 20 gig partition. Because the games for Windows 98 are smaller. And we're going to save 30 gigs for Windows 2000 and the remaining 5 gigs for NT and its support. There we go. Okay. 2003. D. Good. Restart. You must restart your system. Now, uh, I'm rebooting back into that uh, command prompt just so I could F-disk it again and confirm that we do indeed have a drive D now. Yes, we do. So now let's restart and actually do this proper. Fingers crossed this works the way I'm expecting it to. Oh, your computer already has an operating system. Continue setup and replace current operating system. Drive D is not formatted. Windows 98 cannot use unformatted drives. Does it know that I want to go on the D drive? Okay, okay. Format D. All right, now what? Routine check of my system. All right. CD had no errors. Continue. Log file generated. Okay. Exit. Ho, 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 ho. Here we go. And my mouse works. Continue. Other directory. All right, buddy, you're going on day. That's what we wanted. Hmm, what do we have here? I like to remove crap I don't need. We'll give desktop themes. We'll add all the accessories. Add all the communications. We'll add all the multimedia. What's on night? Oh, pfft. we don't need any of that. Give all the system tools. There we go, that, that, that should be nice. Aha, uh -huh. computer name. It is the A500. I need a more creative name for this. Keyboard regional settings. English Canadian. I am in Canada. Start copying files. How long is this going to take? To an SSD? Hopefully less time than we expect. Get help! Ah! <clears throat> oh, restart now. Okay, sir. Oh, phew. It worked. I got worried there because it seemed to have been booting and working without the need for hard drive controller drivers. I was worried that at any moment it was going to try to continue on here and be like, oh, ha, ha, you didn't say the magic word, bud. I can't boot off this. <laughs> I say my name's irrelevant, but it's IR relevant. Guess the first two initials. I finally have something interesting to put in there. Now initialing driver database. <laughs> if the progress indicator stops for a long time and there's no disk activity, please restart your computer. No, you think? Even when they built this operating system, they knew, <laughs> we might hang once in a while, bud. Or just freeze up. Hmm, another restart. 
Is she still gonna boot? I'm wondering if it's done with the disc. So far so good still. Is this the hang they were talking about? Well, the hard drive's definitely doing something, so. Completed updating files continuing to load Windows. This is suspicious now. Is this where we have the hardware failure because of the hard drive controller? Surely you jest. Well, so far it looks like we're still getting lucky and it's still booting off that hard drive controller. Now mind you, I'm gonna admit I did have some situations where it hanged and I tried reinstalling Windows a couple times. Ah, uh, pro tip, make sure you have no extraneous hardware plugged in, like remove the PD disc or removable discs and the SCSI controller. So far so good. Well, it's blazing through this last section, or is it? I stand corrected. And another restart. Haha, -ha, no password. Thank you very much. Uh, plug and play monitor. Unknown device. Ooh, I wonder what that is. Default monitor? We just did the monitor. Unknown device. Creative. Oh, now it's just gonna go through all my hardwares. Okay, I'll, I'll restart. Again. Oh. <laughs> We're in. Okay, go away. System. Device manager. Oh, yes. PCI mass storage controller. Okay, here we go. Reinstall driver. Next. Search for better driver. Floppy disk drive, yes. Uh, excuse me? Excuse me? It's derping out. Properties. Driver. Update driver. Next. Specify location. A. Windows ME. Go. There it is. This should eliminate any confusion we have now about this hard drive controller. We are now in the clear. So now we're in Windows and we got that one driver installed, that one key driver. We're gonna wait for the rest of this till after. Now we move on to doing the Windows 2000 install. Once we get 2000 installed, we'll be able to take certain drivers and get them onto the computer that way through 2000. Oh. Right here, F6 if you want third-party SCSI RAID drivers. Very important you remember that step because Windows 2000 won't work without the hard drive controller drivers installed. Starting up Windows 2000. Are you now? Are you now set? All right, specify additional disk drivers. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. Go. All right, so we want to create a partition now and I don't want to use all the space. I'm gonna make a 30, and that should leave me with about five gigs left for Windows NT. Oh, it's making it the H drive. Why can't we make it a nicer drive than H? <laughs> That's funny, the H drive. All right, install onto the H drive. We're gonna format using FAT32 so that we can see that drive in Windows 98. Continue and format the partition. That's one of the things that's funny with this. Drive letters get scrambled all over the place. And even in Windows 2000, it's not going to see its own boot drive as the C drive. It's gonna see it as the H drive. Now you have to watch out because some programs will want to by default install to C. So you have to make sure you uh, properly uh, edit all installation paths while you're loading up this OS or else you're gonna end up messing up your first DOS partition and it's small. Yeah. And now we wait for this whole process to load up. It looks like it's pulling from the disk drive or the uh, floppy drive one last time. <laughs> now let's see. It might not be time for the bootloader yet. Oh, this is timely. <laughs> All right. Now we just engage in some of the usual suspects. Oh, we got to fix this. That's ours backwards. All right. That's Mr. to you. Finished, you say? Are we really? All right, now, quite possibly, a moment of truth. Come on, big money. Oh, we got Windows 2000. We got Windows 98. Is Windows 98 gonna boot? Looks like it will, but it didn't add DOS to that list. Now we get this error, but that's normal. Yeah, all right. And of course, 2000 should work fine. As you can hear, audio works. Windows 2000 has built-in support for the AWE32. Make this go away. All right, now we move forward to Windows NT, which is being done a little bit differently. And once we get it installed on there, we can use the little application I have located on that drive to hopefully hack DOS back into the boot order. 
So in the meantime, we need to shut down and switch up some hardware. Now this is the one gigabyte SCSI hard drive that my uh, existing Windows NT installation is on. And I confirmed it that it will run with this hardware set. So we can go ahead and start to working on this guy. Oh, now we engage in the loud ripping good time that is legacy SCSI. Ooh, it's gonna hurt your ears after a while, believe you me. Now, before we move forward, we just wanna take a minute to uh, pump some drivers in here to make it a more palatable experience, plus we need to install partition magic. I'm gonna huff the video drivers in here real quick. Ah, this is an example here. It wants to go to the C drive. We don't want it to go to the C drive. H, woo, colors. Restart into a whole new world. So now that we have Partition Magic installed, we can go ahead and migrate our uh, Windows NT over. Now, this does work, or at least it worked for me. Your mileage may vary. We're gonna take that partition, we're gonna copy it, and well, it's going to the back end of here, beginning of an all-located space. Apply changes now. And this one shouldn't require a restart. It should just work. All right, now we're making progress. So now it's just a case of editing the boot.ini in here. But first we have to uh, unhide everything. We're looking for boot.ini right there. All right. Oh, C used to be DOS. Okay, that's gonna make things interesting getting DOS back in here. But getting NT is super easy. We're just gonna copy this because it functions much in the same way except we're gonna point it at partition two or three. Which one is it? One, two, that's 98. That should be three, that should be four. Well, that doesn't add up. We'll, uh, we'll do two just to check. Part three, make another one. Just point it at the various different partitions. I need to disconnect this SCSI drive. We don't need it anymore. Oh! After that high pitch turns off my ears, they just, they just ring. I cannot emphasize enough how irritating this, 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 this drive sounds. All right, it was part three before. Let's see if it's part three this time. That's normal. Ah, good, we're good. Now it still does this Windows 2000 start off bar, but we get the Windows NT blue screen. And perhaps Windows NT is poorly optimized or perhaps years if Driver tinkering has made this blue screen rather slow. Well, but there it is. Now there's one last step to getting NT working properly because it was only a one gigabyte drive. I had that big uh, four gigger on there that I used to be the, 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 the programs drive that I actually installed stuff to. So to finish this off, I'm gonna make one more partition on that hard drive and I'm gonna copy that big beast over. There it is. <laughs> ding, ding. We need this to be the D drive, which it's not gonna let us because something else is trying to be the D drive. Who's trying to be the D drive here? Removable disk D. That's the PD drive. Okay, we can't have this. I might actually have to install a disk. Mm-hmm, okay, the PD drive works in here. So now let's go back to disk management. There it is, sign drive letter. Change that to P because it's the P drive. Unknown. <laughs> yeah, it can't look at those partitions. We might as well remove those drive letters and make this the D because that's what the programs recognize it as. And then uh, let's format it. Quick format. NTFS. Giver. <laughs> format complete. Ah. NT is so snappy on an SSD. It's like just, it's just nothing. It just goos. Just goosh, beep, 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 beep. Now we're gonna, we're gonna hook up this popper for one last hurrah. Oh yeah, listen to that thing wind up. C is DOS now. 
D is our, okay, it automatically knew that this needed to be the D drive because that's what it used to be assigned to. F is now our main boot drive. Wait, where's the drive we just formatted? Oh, conflicting drive letters. Whatever, we'll make it K for now. And then we'll make this D. All right, now we're simply just gonna copy over to D and then everything's gonna be as it left off. This might take a while. I gotta admit, it's oddly satisfying hearing this old beast click away. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Crisis averted. I have some old MP3s on here and <laughs> it takes four seconds to move one MP3. That's just how slow this thing goes. I think it's something like 10 megabytes a second. That wouldn't make sense because an MP3 isn't that big. Ugh, she's gonna be real slow, bud. But you know, just plugging away like an old diesel tractor. It says Ted Zek is amazing. Five seconds. Oh, big ass text file. How big is that text file? There's a page file on here. Well, I could have just deleted that. I already copied that file. How many copies are there on this drive? Oh, it's done. Okay. So now that that's done, everything should work just as I left it. So CorelDRAW, which was initially installed on the D drive, should uh, boot and run. Almost, oh boy, that's the fastest I've ever seen this program load. Noise. It's taking longer to close. Why is it not closing? Where's photo paint? Sh -sh -sh. Mm. Blah. Huh. Nice. Wow. So now we're done with NT. And the only catch with NT is if I wanted to seriously use it, I'd have to swap out the video card because I couldn't find Radeon 9000 drivers for it. And it's probably more trouble than it's worth when I can just swap that out. But nevertheless, it's here now. So the most basic functions that I might need to do in NT can be done just in glorious 16 colors. So let's shut this down. Let's pull this drive. Let's get back into 2000 and see if we can hack that bootloader. Ooh. Oh, I should have let you enjoy the drive noise. Okay, so using this program called Boot Part, Boot Part, which currently is going to be hiding on uh, this drive here. I was using it to tweak on Windows NT. I've never gotten boot part yet to successfully do anything for me, but then I never installed this in the proper order before. Now, if we go to command prompt C, we type boot part, um, boot part, boot part list. Okay, now we're gonna delete um, the part four entry. So we go boot part, move number two. All right, now that's cleaned up. You know, it tells you we're supposed to do something along the lines of air and parameters. Oh, well, that's awesome. That's exactly what it said to do. Boot parts not friggin' working properly here. I think we have to be in MS DOS mode to make it work. Booted into Windows 98 MS DOS mode. And now it's working as it should be. If I type boot part, it lists out all the various partitions that I have. And so I guess it can access them. But we don't really have to worry about partitions. We should just be able to do boot part. DOS 622C boot sect dot 622MS DOS 622. Where running the program, telling the program, that's the switch telling it what you're trying to do, uh, get DOS 622 into the boot INI. There's the file it's gonna make to boot off of, and then that's what's gonna show up there, and pew, written down. Now there's two other commands we're supposed to do. I'm curious how it's gonna work with just that one command installed, adding that one feature. All right, it's on the list, and what happens? Oh, yeah, there it is. DOS 622 on drive C is up and running. Now I just want to do some um, mild tweaking. Edit boot.ini should be able to access it. There it is. Microsoft Windows 98. We're going to emphasize that. So 2000 NT, get rid of the part three. Yep, Win95 DOS, okay. It, did some sort of switch there to say, okay, uh, 98 took over, but here's fixing on that. Now, oh, 
What happens if we try to boot into 98? Has it uh, compromised things? We gotta test all these now. Exit, yes, save. So we know DOS works. I'm confident that NT and 2000 are still gonna work. Let's see, Windows 98, is that still gonna go? Or is it tricky, tricky, dicky, dicky, going back to C, DOS? Oh no, that's that prompt that says, oh yeah, I'm Windows 98 trying to run. Oh, it's hanging now. That might tell us something. We might have to do it the boot part way. Okay, reset it. We'll go and put in the rest of the instructions. Okay, this time we're gonna go back to that working DOS mode. Boot part, oh yes, it's accessible. Boot part. Then we're gonna add the Windows 98 bit. Win 98 C slash boot sect dot what 98. Then it's uh, Windows 98, bud. And that should do it. Boot sector's written. And now there's this one last command line where you go rewrite root. But again, curious what's gonna happen. This one we know doesn't work anymore. What happens if we try this one now? Hey! Normal, normal so far, even though something's up with my Windows 98. And boah, we are in Windows 98. Now did that overwrite DOS? Let's try again. Restart. Okay, let's go back into DOS, see if that's gonna work. Oh yeah, DOS and Windows 98. Now while we're in here, we're gonna clean up the dead entries, because this one's no good anymore. And to put these in an order, um, there we go, 2000 NT 98 DOS. Or maybe I don't want it in that order, I don't know. We'll leave it like that for now. So we know 98 works, we know DOS works. Let's make sure 2000 still works. Looks good. Oh yeah. And if 2000 works, NT's gonna work. And there you have it. One system to rule them all for all your legacy needs. 2000, NT4, 98, and DOS. Really, all you need is 98 and DOS. But without NT4 or 2000, you don't get that nice bootloader feature. So you might as well. Even if you have no use for NT, 2000 is still useful because 98 and DOS have difficulty with modern networking. I know with 2000, I can get onto my NAS box I can get files onto this system that I download, driver updates, programs, you name it. And then once I have it on that FAT32 file system, I'll be able to access it from uh, Windows 98 and or I'll be able to cross import them into DOS. So as far as a retro gaming system, this thing's unstoppable. The only thing it could have is better hardware here. Now, granted, I could make this a little bit better. If I use a Pentium 3 board with a Pentium 3 1000 processor, I'll get a little bit more horsepower. And the AGP ports on those things will support newer cards so I can get more horsepower like that too. Remember, this isn't even my fastest card. But again, we go back to the situation that any game that this system can run, it's gonna be able to run pretty well. Making some of that redundant. And let's face it, I'm a Team Red fanboy. I want AMD, AMD in here. Either way, once again, this is a circumstance. I've done this for the lols. And well, I might actually tinker on this thing a bit. If anything, now that I have these fresh operating systems installed, I have all sorts of driver sets and programs to install into it. Now I already did a DOS install video and well, there's all sorts of Windows 98 install videos out there. And Windows 2000 is pretty straightforward. It's similar to modern operating systems. NT4, well, who cares? It's just there because it can. And so I can access the old files. But yeah, that's it, one disk four operating systems, SSD, on old hardware. This is, huh, in my opinion, the ultimate retro gaming system. If only I could run an AWE32 on a much newer hardware set with a PCI Express card. Oh, I don't know. in time for dinner.